Hey everybody, Jason here again with the GDT Basics video question line. Today's topic is on positional control of X, Y, and Z translations. Today's question is in reference to a drawing that was also submitted. The question was, we're having a very spirited debate about the height of a post in the Z axis. Do we need an additional reference frame for the top of that post? I think since you already have a call out to the three datums, and those three datums control all six degrees of freedom, it should be enough to define the positional tolerance in all three axes as well. So let's take a look at the drawing. Now, I've taken some liberties and redrafted this example drawing that was submitted to us in SOLIDWORKS to make it a little bit more of a clear image. However, the geometries are the same. Some of the values might have changed, but nonetheless, we can still talk about it from a fundamental standpoint as to what we're controlling with these feature control frames. Now, I left a lot of things off this drawing. Uh, it was a much more complicated drawing than this, but I have dimensioned the features that do matter. So we have three position callouts here controlling the location of these three posts. So two here, one here. We also have a position callout controlling the location of this post, which is this post right here. So we have four posts on this part that are being controlled to dating reference frame B, C, A. Now the question is, do we need this position callout and this position callout to control the height of these posts, right? Where this post is at in the Z axis. Is that necessary? And the comment is, I think since you have a call out to three datums, it should be enough to define the positional call out in all three axes. Well, let's define the datum reference frame for this part here. And again, this is an assembly. I'm assuming these posts are separate parts that then get assembled into this sort of manifold. Uh, even that being the case, that's why we have reference dimensions here on the size. The size is being controlled on probably a piece part drawing, and that's why it's referenced. That's why these are referenced. The manifold probably has its own piece part drawing where those size dimensions are already controlled. So we're just referencing them here. That's perfectly legal. Uh, the datum reference frame is primary datum feature B. That is this cylinder right here. This cylinder creates datum axis B. Datum axis B goes through the part, in and out of the part, in this view here. So datum axis B, as a primary datum, can control two translations and two rotations. So we got a rotation this way and then a rotation in and out of the page. Leaving translation this way and rotation about this axis also free. So then we rely on the secondary datum reference, and that is datum feature C. Datum feature C is this width feature here. So these two surfaces create a midplane. That midplane is datum feature C, or the secondary datum. It can control translation this way, rotation this way, and then rotation this way, which is in and out of the page in this view. Now, B is already controlling this translation, so C can't do that. B is also already controlling this rotation, so it can't do that. What it can do as a midplane is control this rotation here, and that is a rotation that at datum axis B could not control. And so datum feature C gets to control this rotation. So now we're up to five degrees of freedom that we're controlling. We're missing that six degree of freedom, which is the translation along this axis. C nor B can control that translation. And that's where A is introduced here as this surface. Uh, A is going to be able to stop that translation, right? So we have fully defined all six degrees of freedom and established a zero point right here along this axis first, stopping on this midplane and this plane here. So we have zero, zero, zero on our part, right? And so we know exactly where features should be with respect to those datum planes using these basic dimensions. So we know from A, this cylinder should be 44.5 millimeters away from datum plane A, right? And we know the location, the true position of these three holes, as well as this fourth hole here vertically uh, away from datum axis B, right? So we know where everything should be. Now, the question is, is this control redundant? Don't these two controls already control the vertical location of this pin and the vertical location of these three pins? And the answer is no, because these are only controlling the axes. They are controlling this feature of size, this feature of size, this feature of size, and that feature of size. Those are cylinders. They're controlling the axis of those cylinders to a diametric tolerance of 0.25. So the axis of our cylinder, so if this is our post, and we have an axis, well, we're controlling that axis to a tolerance zone diametrically of 0.25. It's not controlling anything vertically. 
In other words, what I always like to say is you can't tell me based off of this plane here or this axis where this cylinder exists vertically, right? What does exist vertically is this surface. And this surface has to be controlled separately because it's a separate feature. That post vertically is only being controlled via this top surface. And that makes this callout very essential and these three callouts very essential. It's locating these surfaces to their own tolerance zone. So you're locating where the axis is this direction, but you're locating where these surfaces are in this direction. And that fully constrains that part in this assembly. So one thing to point out here, though, on the drawing, there were diametric symbols here on these surfaces. Those diametric symbols are illegal. They shouldn't be there. Our tolerance zone is truly the distance between two parallel planes if we're applying position to a flat planar surface. So again, drop off the tolerance zones. Your tolerance zone here is 0.5, and it's the distance between two parallel planes. And those parallel planes are locked in location using basic dimensions back to your datum reference frame. So one thing I'll point out though is using position on flat planar surfaces like we do see here is only legal in the ISO standard, perfectly legal in the ISO standard. Uh, in the ASME standard, position can only be used on features of size, so cylinders, uh, width features. Uh, in order to control the location of a flat planar surface, we need to rely on something like the profile callout. And we'll see here the profile callout has uh, the ability to control it just like position does in the ISO standards. We're controlling the location of these flat planar surfaces. And that is just basically a plus minus half of this value centered at this location with respect to the data reference frame. So this is perfectly legal. Again, this is how we control the location of those surfaces up and down, the locations of those studs in the final assembly. This is how we control the location horizontally or the center axis of those studs. So hopefully that answers your question and uh, thanks for submitting. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by training experts.